News now from Dalal Street where the markets are down almost 2% both indices. In fact, it's the fourth day of a fall in the Indian markets. The Sensex is trading below 25,000 for the first time since June 2014. And the Nifty is down nearly 5% in the last four sessions. Prashant now joins us live from Mumbai. Uh, Prashant, what's spooking the markets? Uh, it's largely China, and I think it's uh, kind of become fashionable and easy to put the blame at China's doorstep, but that really is the big global story. Uh, it's been uh, a recognized fact that uh, China, and I think this has been true for the last one year or so, most people have realized that China has got no other option uh, but to devalue its currency, to A, remain competitive in global markets, and also uh, devalue its way out of debt. Uh, so those two problems face China and China will devalue the currency, the yuan that is. Uh, what was not anticipated is the pace of the devaluation. Uh, you know, the yuan has been devalued. I mean, the People's Bank of China, the Central Bank of China fixes a yuan rate and the currency then is allowed to trade within a band of that fixed rate. The pace of the devaluation has been much faster than what has been expected. What the yuan de devaluation does is in a way it exports deflation to the rest of the world. Uh, China essentially is saying that we don't want to import, we want to export. Uh, China has been called the factory of the world, but the problem is that demand around the world is extremely uh, low. I mean, uh, there is a global growth, for example, uh, is tracking very, very low single digits. So uh, where is the demand? And China is also in a position where it's, ex it's got excess capacity, it's able to, and it wants to sell uh, uh, goods and uh, goods that it produces at, at extremely low prices. So in a way, it's exporting deflation to other countries. Uh, that's the big problem. That is essentially what is spooking uh, global markets, Indian markets as well. Uh, the other point uh, is the U.S. market. The U.S. market for a couple of years now, actually, I would say at least two years, many have been saying the U.S. market rally has to end. It must end. It's done very well against emerging markets for the last five years, and it's about time uh, that that run ends. The beginning of 2016 for the first time is showing that maybe that prophecy, that expectation is starting to come true. The US market, the benchmark, the S&P 500 has declined about 5% uh, since uh, December 29th, essentially in the new year about 5%. Uh, it's still only 7% away from its all-time high. So, I mean, compare that to India. The Indian market has already lost about 18% from the highs. So I think the US may have a little bit more uh, uh, sort of, you know, uh, catch up to do on the way down, combine that with what's happening in China, combine that with generally very low economic activity around the world, the Fed increasing interest rates after five or six years. The next hike, by the way, is expected in March. A small hike, but a hike nevertheless. The era of low interest rates uh, sort of behind us. Uh, I think uh, those are the big global themes which are really playing out. Oil prices is a, a classic clear example of how low demand is and the amount of capacity which is there. Uh, oil is now at 33 dollars a barrel or so. I mean, when's the last time we saw that? You got to go back all the way to 2004, 2005 to find oil at these prices. Uh, locally here in India as well, Amitabh, uh, as we've been saying, the latest data from the economic think tank, CMI, suggests that for the months between October and December 2015, that's the last quarter of calendar year 2015, new investment proposals... Uh, uh, mind you, new investment proposals, plans to invest in further capacity, that declined 74%. Uh, and that data is really, really worrying. Uh, and the other uh, data point is that in, in the whole of 2015, new investment proposals were actually lower than 2014, which actually was an election year. I mean, I, I think uh, to many that uh, really does come as a big surprise for those who were saying that incrementally things in India will also start to pick up. No doubt, the macroeconomic situation in India, growth prospects are much better than other countries in the region or even most other countries in the world. But I think at a time like this when global markets are uh, very, very jittery, capitalists are going back home, I think, uh, you know, India finds it very, very dif difficult to escape that uh, scenario. That's essentially the picture, Amitabh. Back to you.